<laughs> and you know what? Yeah. USC is going to break a tie and have another number one overall pick tonight, almost certainly with uh, Caleb Williams. Yeah, and, and with any draft, there's, there's talk, there's speculation. But it seems like this year, with what we're seeing now with Caleb Williams, it's, it's almost a foregone conclusion, or it is. Only team that he visited, the, the Bears, the only quarterback they hosted was Caleb Williams. And NFL fans are going to fall in love with his playmaking ability. We'll remind you a lot of Patrick Mahomes, his skill set. Can't wait to see him play at the next level. A lot of the mock drafters say there's going to be six quarterbacks taken in this first round. Number two overall, everybody's expecting to be this man, Heisman winner, Jaden Daniels. Then you got Drake May out of North Carolina that allegedly is going to number three. JJ? JJ McCarthy, JJ. national champion at Penix. Might have some movement to go get him tonight. And then Bo Nix is allegedly linked to a couple different teams who love him. So the quarterback market is a plenty tonight. The deepest position in this draft is the receiver. Man, the top three, those guys are fascinating. You got Malik, neighbors, coach, you had to defend that guy. He was unbelievable. But then Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver one, he's been phenomenal his whole career. And Rome Odunze, obviously, Michael Penix Jr. was a Heisman finalist because he had receivers to throw to like Odunze. You know, Dallas Turner was a great player for us, is a great player, great athlete, great pass rusher, three way rusher. This guy, Byron Murphy, is. Unbelievable disruptive inside Terry on Arnold who's made a tremendous improvement in his play and and then we got Quint Quinion Mitchell who played at Toledo and did a great job there. So this is a, a really good corner class. What you need though are the big guys up front to take care of business. Joe Alt, son of an NFL great JC Latham from Alabama. We could have as many yeah. as seven offensive linemen, most of them tackles, including Olo Fashanu, Troy Fontenau. Yeah, um, job. Be I mean, job. You, like, you like that? And how about you? You're going to like this one too. Taliese Fuaga. Oh, yeah. From Ooh. Oregon State. And it might not just be those guys. I mean, George has got a Marius Mims that could go with Jordan Morgan from Arizona, Kingsley Suamatia from BYU. All of those guys potentially going early, either at the end of the first round tonight or maybe early tomorrow. Our good friend Field Yates is joining us for all of our coverage on ABC tonight. This is how he has them stacked up as the best available. I'm pleased to be joined by Field, who, by the way, was carted trying to get into the sports book. Had a baby uh, child. Had a boy, had a boy Field. Okay, so now <laughs> what have you got? What are you hearing right now in terms of news on this draft on this uh, hours before we start? It's too bad. You're like, sure know that the Bears are going to be taking Caleb Williams number one overall followed by most likely Jaden Daniels going to the Washington Commanders at number two overall and then the Patriots have to make a decision can they resist the temptation to potentially trade down from number three overall and acquire what would surely be a boatload of draft picks to help fill out this roster the risk of course in doing that is you might miss out on your preferred quarterback target we have seen three quarterbacks go back to back to back to begin the NFL draft that happened just three years ago in 2021 we could see it happen once again tonight and I am so glad to have coach Saban on the show for this week and going forward of course because it is not a defensive heavy draft so he is our defensive addition for the 2024 NFL draft class will make the biggest impact over the next season ahead hey, hey, hey Phil just a quick question there's been so many mock drafts so much speculation over the last few months it, when you look at this now that we're so close to this being started what, what's your gut on the way the first five picks would go right now. Yeah, Herbie, I think the Patriots are going to end up resisting that temptation that I alluded to and just take Drake May, the signal caller out of North Carolina, who I know this entire panel has a lot of love for. Just turned 21 years old, six foot four, 226 pounds. Of course, Coach Saban knows him well from recruiting him during his high school days. And then we end up having Marvin Harrison Jr. going number four to the Arizona Cardinals. We can talk about the idea of moving back and all the draft picks that you could get if you're the Arizona Cardinals like they did just a year ago. Or you could take the most pro-ready prospect in in the entire class who fits Arizona's biggest need right now, which is wide receiver, and then the Los Angeles Chargers, I think end up not trading down wow. Herbie. And part okay. of the reason being, it is now the Joe Hortiz and Jim Harbaugh show out there in Los Angeles. And this team wants to be dominant in the trenches. There is a former player for Coach Saban and J.C. Latham, a pure, natural right tackle, excellent feat for a man of 340 pounds who would be an ideal fit to help protect Justin Herbert going forward. Phil, we'll be excited to see if anybody gets antsy that needs a quarterback that maybe gets up to four or five and see how it goes there. But how about let's talk about the offensive dominance of this draft. You talked about Saban being the defensive draft pick for the entire thing as he joins us on game day, and he looks 
fantastic. He, he does. He, he, he's got a good tan. He's been golfing his ass off. He just got back from Germany. Guten Tag to you. But 19 <laughs> is the number of uh, the most amount of offensive players drafted in the first round in the past. We're going to surpass that by how many you think this evening? Phil? I think there's a chance we could push for 24 first round offensive picks, Pat, because it's not just those six quarterbacks that you guys have already discussed so far on the set. Reese was talking about this dominant offensive line class and what's the one thing that basically every team in the NFL needs right now? It's offensive line, whether it's tackles, whether it's interior players, and we are now seeing guards make 20 plus million dollars per year. There was a time 15, 20 years ago where teams would say, I can find a guard on day three and not have to worry about it whatsoever. We are not in that version of the NFL anymore. And then as Dez was talking about, this historically deep wide receiver class, which features three players at the very top, then in a different year would not just be the number one wide receiver, but in a runaway vote as well. Well, you know, one thing I would like to ask you, Fields, is everywhere I've been, whether it's Germany or on the tee box in <laughs> Florida someplace, uh, is everybody wants to know about the quarterback. So you don't think anybody's going to try to move up in the draft to get a quarterback uh, especially some of these teams that have a great need. Yeah, I think the Vikings are the team to watch here tonight, Coach. They have an obvious need. They have two first-round picks at 11 and 23, but I do think the Patriots at number three are the pivot point, and the Patriots' dramatic need of their own would make them the most likely team where Drake May ends up by the end of the evening. You know, I think one of the things to think about if this were still a Bill Belichick regime, yes, <laughs> put some heavy money on the Patriots moving back. Absolutely. So more choice, uh, more draft choice. Get in there, Pat. Well, well, 97 Pat. trades. Not Bill Belichick. And I think it's 97. Most by in any GM's history in draft trades. We wow. had a ton of them last year. A lot of them coming in the first round. The consensus seems to be the quarterbacks will go one, two, three. Now that's happened three times in the common draft era since 67. Oh. Jim Plunkett went to the Super Bowl, won one with the Raiders. Archie Manning, Dan Pastorini. Dan Pastorini. Long time power stone. Wow, yeah, that's a throwback right there. Number seven, exactly. throwing to Kenny Burrow. Yes, look, at look, look at Arch with a single bar. Look at Arch with a single bar. I love yes, it. Sir. Arch. <laughs> Arch could still move. Yeah, oh, yeah. That's that like could. he was back yeah. in the day. Could still yep. spin it. 1999 happened again. Tim Couch, Achilles Smith did not work out. Donovan McNabb most certainly did. Going to the Eagles number two also. But Philadelphia to a Super Bowl. And then more recently, this could be a cautionary tale here. 2021, one, two, three quarterbacks. Trevor Lawrence went to the Jags. That's going swimmingly. But Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, no longer with their teams. In fact, there were five first round quarterbacks that year. Trevor Lawrence is the only one who is starting and the only one still with his original team. And that was just three drafts ago when everybody thought they had found their cornerstone and franchise quarterback. With those types of things in mind, we are now joined by Adam Schefter and Pete Thamel. Schefter, we're going to start with you. What's the latest you're hearing as we approach Roger Goodell going to the mic and announcing the first pick? Well, Reese, it's always about the quarterbacks, and there are quarterbacks expected to go one, two, three. Then there are a few other quarterback questions. Do the New York Giants at number six go quarterback? Do the Minnesota Vikings at number 11 trade up into the top 10 to get their quarterback? But the teams from 11 to 13 all have quarterback needs. Minnesota could use a quarterback at 11. Denver could use a quarterback at 12. Las Vegas could use a quarterback at 13. And if somehow there are six quarterbacks that go in the first round of the draft, that would be the first time that that's happened since the high profile draft class of 1983. And in that class, Shefty, three of those quarterbacks went to the Hall of Fame. Three of them, varying degrees of success over their careers. Now, Pete, the guy's going to go number one is Caleb Williams to the Bears. And you got a little intel and insight on what his family's talking about right now, huh? Well, Reese, Caleb Williams' family has been planning for this since he was recruited. In 2019, they told all the schools that he was that were recruiting him, give us a plan to be the number one pick in the 2024 draft. Well, that's tonight. Only two pieces of drama left. One, will he cry? Caleb says no. <laughs> two, will he hug Roger Goodell? Adam reported earlier, Roger had back surgery. He might not be in a hugging mood. Yeah. So we're, he's going to be tested early tonight in yeah. the draft. Caleb wants to go in for a big one. We'll see what happens. Pete, you're not supposed to inhale cigars. <laughs> <laughs> Detroit getting the best out of Pete. Let's just puff those. Pete, you're supposed to puff that. Sound good. Thank you for working, boys. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, Pete's bad. Right now. Yeah, he is. He's yeah. fighting through it. He's been fighting through it for a couple of days here. 
but the quarterbacks, oh. as Nick said, have been dominating all the talk. Yeah, I, and I think the top three, of course, on Pat's show, they created a lot of this. And <laughs> Some of these other shows, that I, I don't think the depth of this. I mean, sometimes we just forget about guys like Michael Penix and Bo Nix. If you look at the entire group, you can actually add Spencer Rattler, Michael Pratt from Tulane. We're going to kind of remind you that there's more than just the top three. Of course, Caleb Williams, everyone's talking about his ability to escape and, and make plays off platform. Legendary stuff. He's going to have to be able to play and make the basic plays. This is what... Nick Saban talked to us about yesterday in a meeting. Yeah, he can throw from the pocket, but when Jaden Daniels pulls it down, he scares defensive coordinators because of his playmaking ability and long speed. It's not a 20-yard gain, it's a 70-yard gain, and he can do that at the next level. Drake May has that big, long body. Some people think that the release is a little bit too long. Didn't have the greatest cast around him this past year. Still so much upside. This guy right here, I, I did five of his games. I don't know why he's not getting more buzz. Yeah. Michael Penix from the pocket is as accurate as, as I've seen in college football in a long time. Bo Nix, some people are comparing physically to a guy like Drew Brees. Not trying to put that label on him, but he can also create, make a lot of plays, tremendous leader. There's J.J. McCarthy. Just a winner. This guy can do everything that's asked of him. Comes out of that Jim Harbaugh system. Learned how to play an NFL style. Now, again, here, let's not forget about Spencer Rattler. Left Oklahoma, was a Heisman front runner there. Landed in South Carolina, had a great couple years. Michael Pratt at Tulane. Athletic guy at 6'2", 217, runs a 4'6". So there's a, it's a great group of quarterbacks. I, I would say not just the, those top three guys. A lot of football being played by a lot of those guys there. I yeah. think that's a big asset yeah. whenever you're going into so the NFL. True. Seeing a lot of defenses, being in a lot of situations. That Michael Penix stock that you said that hasn't been loud enough, I agree with you. What he did with that Washington team was awesome. And they also ran a professional outfit. Yep. You know, he was a quarterback that was old school. They have a run play in, and Rome is one-on-one. -on -one. Who cares? I'm going to my guy. He's able to put it in his spot, runs a 4-4. Same stuff with J.J. McCarthy. Yep. I think his conversation should be louder yep. as well. And I think as we continue to go through the night, I'll be excited to see if a GM says, you know what? All the chatter in the media and those dumbass shows, the yep, one you referred yep, to earlier, yep, yep, yep. they don't know what we're actually thinking because any of these guys could potentially change the entire organization, Coach. Yeah, well, I think the biggest thing for all these guys is what do they do moving forward? It, the mo one of the most difficult things when you're the first, second, third pick, you're picked in the top ten, is the expectation created by that and how you're going to make an immediate impact, you know, on your team. Well, from a development standpoint, I think that the, the organization has to be vertically aligned on how are we going to develop this guy? Are we going to play him right away? Right, which then that guy has to have a lead hardwiring to work through frustration because he's not going to have immediate success probably because what kind of players does he have around him if you get picked in the first three rounds? So all these things become a factor in how these guys develop and the impact they make and how frustrated they get if they don't have immediate success. And I think that's the key to it because they all got talent. They're all going to be good players. But getting there, that's the most important thing. Yeah, as I look at these um, GMs and pro personnel people talk about the quarterbacks, I'm always trying to figure out, okay, what are they thinking? What are they looking for in a quarterback? Because like you said, all of them have talent. But you talked about developing players. And the one thing I used to say about Nick Saban, I don't care if you, you talk about his, his recruiting classes, top four, top five, five-star, four-star. When they got to Tuscaloosa, his coaching staff did a tremendous job developing young talent. And I think that's the thing that a lot of these quarterbacks, they're going to have to deal with once they go to the pro level. They're going to have to develop in the, into a pro quarterback. The first thing that's going to surprise them is the speed of the game. I was at dinner last night with E.J. Manuel. He talked about that. He said, I wish I would have had someone tell me how the speed of the game was going to change and have a mentor. Uh, someone who's a mentor who can actually teach you how to break down tape, how to game plan, and then how to look at defense. And so they're going to, there's a huge learning curve for a lot of these guys, despite the fact that they have a lot of talent. Yeah, Tremendous yeah, learning curve. Yeah. Tremendous, because a lot of these guys are playing college, they're in the gun, they're playing the spread, yeah. they've never ha had their hands under the center. Yeah. Right. They've, a lot of them have never been in a huddle. Ever. Everything's yeah. in a huddle now. Yeah. It's different in the NFL, and that's a transition, and it takes guys that have the right mindset hardwiring to develop and be patient in how they develop. And, and let's not forget this. I, I looked this up and went back to Matthew Stafford back in 2009. So essentially the last 15 drafts, 46 first round quarterbacks have been selected. 16 of them are, you know, guys that you would consider their studs. They, they lived up to it. 
43 percent, 20 guys just missed. You know, Johnny Menzel, Tim Tebow, E.J. Manuel, whoever it was. Yeah. And then 10 that are like a Ryan Tannehill, guys that have played. But you're looking at 16 out of 46. So hard. That have hit. So yeah. what we're talking about here, whether it's the ability to process because the game's speeding up, yeah. the complexity of the defenses going yep. from seeing two or three coverages to seven or eight in one game, yep. uh, you know, being that leader, having that it factor. Situation. Yeah. There's just so many things yeah. that you're trying to figure out. It's a, a scratch off head coach. Yeah. Really and one is. of the biggest problems I thought for quarterbacks is when you look, you call a play, then you have to look at the coach, and he's going to call the play for you. Yeah. You can't do that in the NFL. Yeah. You know, also, too, if there is a difference of opinion, it's all going to be happy, happy, joy, joy when we cut to those draft rooms. And, hey, we got hey. our guy. Yeah. If there's somebody in there that doesn't believe, yeah, get with the program. Yeah. Whoever you got to, right, you got. Right. Yeah, exactly. they got to get behind right. him. Good point. And, and, need, and, and put receivers yep. and linemen around him. Yep. I mean, if you want to go, <laughs> look at Bryce, Bryce Young's a yeah. great example. I mean, yeah. we can dive right. into it's that. A, it's not like Bryce Young forgot how to play quarterback. He <laughs> went from being Steph Curry, like, look at this magician, to – you got nobody around it. Now right. you're about to get coach going. Yep. Quarterback is the hardest position to play <laughs> in any sport if you don't have good players around you. Yeah. That's why leadership is important in this position as well, because you got to get the people around you to play well. Yeah, yeah you got to make yeah. people better, but like that's why you think about the Chicago situation, because they're the number one overall pick, because Carolina actually sucked the most out of everybody in the NFL. Yeah. So they were able to earn the number one overall pick. They got a good defense. They've invested in weapons. Yeah. They got no line. They got a culture brewing with Eberflus. It's like yeah. Yeah. this might be the best situation. Bears for a number one overall I agree. I in agree. a long time. That's right. fair.